Harper, sveglia! Buongiorno! Happy National Homemade Soup Day, Harper! Oh, goody, it's soup day. Buongiorno, Harper! Oh, my gosh. Ah, yes, today is apparently National Homemade Soup Day. So we're thinking that we might do a video about soup, but there's only one problem. With a few exceptions, I don't really like soup. Actually, come to think of it, Ava's not the biggest fan either. Do you like soup? I'm sure that there are a bunch of soup uh, lovers out there who are uh, uh, angrily typing up comments at me right now, but I don't know, just never got into it. Actually, I need to take that back a little bit because there is one thing I really do like about soup, and that's dipping bread into it. Ever since I was a kid, anytime my, my dad would cook soup for dinner, I would get very excited about the dipping of the bread in the soup and the eating of the bread, that part was good. But then the soup itself, I wasn't really that into. However, that brings me to an interesting um, Italian linguistic oddity. So the word zuppa in Italian, if you were to look it up, it is always translated as soup. If you go to a restaurant in America and you see something on the menu called zuppa, uh, it will probably be a soup as you and I would Think of it. However, in Italian, zuppa actually means something a little bit different. Something I'm pretty into. And whether you like soup or not, you might be into it too. So today, Ava's gonna show us a little bit about Italian zuppe. And we'll start with a quick and simple example to show you what a zuppa is. In Italy, zuppa is some bread dipped in broth. Which means that to make a zuppa, zuppa, we need bread. And broth. It's important that uh, your bread uh, is a good bread, is a crusty good bread, uh, which means that wonder bread doesn't work. It's also very important that the bread is a steel bread because think that zuppa is a dish that uh, was born to reuse the leftover bread. So try to find a good bread and try to leave it for two or three days uh, just to get it uh, stale, harder, not fresh anymore. And here we have the broth. Most of the time uh, the broth that is used for uh, zuppa is uh, a meat broth. I made this with uh, a chunk of uh, beef meat, uh, onion, celery, carrots, parsley, potatoes, and I let it cook for about four hours, three hours and a an half. I'm uh, filter some of this broth because uh, this uh, zuppa has meat or vegetables involved. So what I need is just the broth. Because of this zuppa that we are going to make uh, it's a very simple dish. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients. It's very important that everything you use is top quality, which means that you need a very good broth because this is your dish. The second step is to toast fry the bread in a pan with a little bit of butter. Now we need an egg. I need to quickly interject here with a message from our imaginary lawyer. The egg in this zuppa is traditionally served raw. Now, in theory, this raw egg is actually pasteurized by the heat of the dish when it's finished. However, given the state of the food industry in a lot of places, uh, we thought it was best to actually cook the egg this time. I'm going to fry this egg just for a little bit because it's very important with this soup that the yolk is still uh, running. I imagine it should still be runny considering the fact that it really should be raw. Uh, see, Harper, it's like uh, we are doing this because we want to be safe, uh, but uh, traditionally we won't. Now is the moment 
amount of the cheese because this zuppa requires parmigiano or grana padano. And now is the moment of our very hot broth. the zuppa. Can I do the honors of breaking the yolk? Please. This is called zuppa pavese. Pavese is from Pavia. Pavia is a city in Lombardia. It seems that it's a very old recipe that goes back uh, more or less around the medieval age. And it seems that it was also soup served to one of the several kings we had in Italy. And the king was so impressed that uh, from that moment he became a staple in the Lombardia food culture. A zuppa fit for a king. A zuppa for a king. Also a zuppa fit for a guy who thinks that soup should be a little, a little more bread, a little less broth. Is the soup for you, Albert. It's perfect. Now I know how important it is to let the bread Soak up the broth. E certo, Arthur. Buon appetito. That is even better than I thought it was going to be. Look, Arpir, you should understand that the king usually they appreciate the very good things. You know. <laughs> As we said before, for this soup mm. is very important. Mmm, sorry. That's so simple and so good. It's very important that for a dish so simple like the zuppa pavese, all the ingredients are very good ingredients because at the end, if you have a very bad broth, the soup doesn't taste good. If you have a very bad bread, the soup doesn't taste good. Everything is really good here. The broth is amazing. The bread toasted in butter, super yummy when soaking up all that delicious broth. Mamma mia. Mm. Mamma mia. This is still though, relatively soup-like. And that I think most people who look at this would go, would say like, oh, it's a weird soup. But I know that there are some zuppe out there that are even less soup-like. Which means a soup that is not eaten with a spoon, no? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Over the years here on Pasta Grammar, we cooked the dishes from all over Italy, except from for one single region. And today we are going to fix this uh, mistake. Uh, the region is Val d'Aosta. And this soup is from Val d'Aosta. How is it possible that we've missed an Italian region? How is that even possible? I don't know. Also because uh, the food from Val d'Aosta is pretty delicious. It's very fatty rich, cheesy, fried, so I don't know why. Okay, that's crazy, but at least we're fixing that today. See, today we are fixing it. You got a cabbage, I see. I got a cabbage because our soup this time requires cabbage. Now we are going to boil the cabbage in the beef broth and we will boil it until the cabbage is tender. is from Val d'Aosta and being from Val d'Aosta requires uh, a cheese from Val d'Aosta. Now here there is written Fontina. Is this the real Fontina from Val d'Aosta? No. If you can find another choice can be for example uh, an aged Asiago. Even, even that was hard to find actually. I know because we are in the middle of the desert. I know not <laughs> This time you need to, pre to prepare your soup in a oven proof dish because we will uh, bake our soup for a little bit. Baked soup? See, si, yeah, baked soup. <laughs> That's my si. kind of soup. So what you need to do is a layer of bread. Then you need to start chopping some fontina. Another layer of bread. Another layer of fontina. Another layer of bread. 
when the cabbage as you can see is very very soft and tender is the moment in which we can place the cabbage in our soup we need enough broth to soak the bread I need to melt a little bit of butter. Last but not least, we need a little bit of cinnamon. What? Sì, cinnamon are Cinnamon? Yes, don't be shocked because do you may do you remember when we made the ravioli from Friuli Venezia Giulia? Oh yeah. They, they use do. cinnamon. And now we bake it at 360 Fahrenheit, which means 180-185 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes or until all the fontina is melted and there is a delicious crust on top. This is a pretty crazy soup. This is not a pretty crazy soup, this is a soup because it's bread dipped in a liquid and the soup has a very thick texture. We should, we should really say soup, Eva. Ah, si. That's a Even we're getting confused here. Ooh, that has a crust to it. And yes, we're eating a soup with a fork, Arthur. <laughs> That's my kind of soup. What is it that you say? Uh, spoons are for sick people? Spoons are for sick people. <laughs> By the way, Arp, this soup is called Zuppa alla Valpellinese. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's something unbelievable mm -hmm. good. Cheesy, yummy. The cinnamon on top. Yes, that weirdly works. As I told you, it's not so weird. It's a little odd. No, because you are used to see cinnamon just in sweet things. That's true. No, in Italy we use also for savory thing. We've talked on the channel before about the magic of stale bread being re-soaked in liquid. Something incredible kind of happens there. This is a little bit different because what we did before was like rock hard stale. This is like semi-stale, but something about the combination of the cheese melting and then the broth soaking into the semi-stale bread. It's really hard to describe the texture of this without putting it in your mouth, which I wish I could do. It's scrumptious. It reminds me of one of the first, I think, real zuppes. That doesn't make zuppes. any sense, zuppes. Zuppe. Zuppe. It reminds me of one of the very first real zuppe that you made for me for a Thanksgiving that is absolutely amazing. And I think that that would be a real good way to end today. Our last soup is a very cheesy soup. Zuppa. La nostra ultima zuppa, our last zuppa is a very cheesy zuppa. Also because it's from a region where they are very famous for their, their cheeses, not just one, a lot of cheeses. This zuppa, use a cheese from that region that is very difficult to find also in the other part of Italy. Something that you can use to replace is what in Italy we call provola. Provola is what in America you call provolone because the real provolone is another cheese. <laughs> so when you, if you are going to do this soup and you are going to buy the cheese, uh, look for provolone because that is what you need. And then I'm going to use also some pecorino. The construction of this uh, zuppa is very similar to the other one because we are going to do a layer of bread and then a layer of cheese. This time, no cinnamon involved, but pepper. Mm. 
Traditionally for this soup is used a sheep broth. I know how difficult it is here to find sheep milk, sheep ricotta, sheep cheese, <laughs> sheep meat. So you can use also a very good beef broth. So it can't be lamb broth, it has to be sheep? Uh, it's like a lamb, but maybe you eat in another way because it's more tender. A sheep is pretty tough, so you make the broth out of a sheep because it's tough. And now we finish our soup with more pecorino. A little bit of more uh, provola, provolone. And now we bake it. 370 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25-30 minutes until on top all the cheese is melted, there is a delicious crust and most of the broth is completely evaporated. I am so excited. We've gone from spoons to forks and now from bowls to plates. See Arthur, because this is a soup but it's also known as a sort of lasagna made out of bread because as you can see is thick. Oh yes it is, thick and cheesy. I'm very excited because I have not had this in a long time. The name of this zuppa is zuppa gallurese or zuppa quada. This is the Sardinian version because then in Italy there is another zuppa quada that comes from Veneto but it's a little bit different. <laughs> you ever cut soup with a knife before? We can't wait. <laughs> See? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that I've said this like 3 times today, but that's my kind of soup. Let's let's dig in, shall we? See, sí, let's dig in. Buon appetito. Mm. Mm. Every bit as good as I remembered. The bread is soft but crunchy on the top with a little bit of black pepper. <laughs> I don't know. It's... Definitely my favorite out of all three. It has the best texture, the best flavor because it's so cheesy. It's an amazing dish. <laughs> Are you mocking my grunts? My satisfied grunts? Now, because all of our friends, they should know that when you really like something, <laughs> in order to understand mm. if he likes really something. While uh, when he gave the first bite and then he makes, mm, means that he's loving. <laughs> you don't say, it's good, it's delicious, good job. No, it's just, mm. Mm. <laughs> So you understand how good is a dish on, based on how many? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so you know, it's real, it's like... Uh... I know it's real. And I remember one of the first time when my mom, she asked me, but uh, he likes, he doesn't like, because you didn't say a word. Yeah, you had to explain to her. No, he, he really likes it. He's doing a lot of mm, mm. I'm sorry that I don't have a visual sign that I really like something. No, no, but you... <laughs> Whether you are a actual soup lover or not, I promise you will be a fan of these zuppe. Each of them, they have their own uh, character, their own, their own place in the food world of Italy. Before we go, a quick shout out to a young pasta grammarian who's busy making gnocchi. Bravo! I like his uh, his shirt. I which know has the, the Trinacria. The symbol of Sicily on it. The which three has legs. a name, a Trinacria. If you want to become a pasta grammarian, just hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media at Pasta Grammar. We will see you guys next time. Ciao. Ciao. I think that uh, this is my lasagna to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's sure a lot easier to make than a lasagna. Absolutely.